Today, DJI released an update for the digital FPV system that includes analog recording, Betaflight OSD, as well as some other tweaks as well. And in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of those features and take you through how to use that Betaflight OSD with the FPV system. Today, DJI pushed a big release for the new FPV system, and that is version 1.00.0200, and that includes a whole host of new features. These include support for recording the analog AV input. Now, this is a feature many people have been waiting for, and DJI have now added the ability to record the analog input directly to the SD card on the side of the FPV goggles. Now, this records at full resolution, also at either 50 or 60 frames a second depending on if you're using PAL or NTSC. In PAL it records at 712 times 576 at 50 frames a second and in NTSC it records in 712 times 480 at 60 frames a second and this means that it is a fully fledged recording DVR and is not line skipping like some of the other ones do in other goggles. Further to this they've also improved overall analog stability and they've also managed to reduce the analog analog input latency. Now I haven't actually tried this myself however the reports I've seen this afternoon are now saying that basically the latency is non-existent and it is behaving just like you would expect off any normal FPV goggles via the analog input. Now this is a big one that some people have been complaining about because some people have found the latency on analog has been quite high and others have found it quite low however today DJI have addressed that and it really does mean that the analog side of the goggles can be used in normal real world situations when using it with an external receiver or using it with a mod depending on what you prefer. Further to this, they've also added support for the Betaflight OSD integration and I will come on to that a little bit more further on in the video and actually give you a demo of that in use. However, DJI have added the ability to control 24 different elements of the Betaflight OSD and that will overlay onto the screen of the goggles and you have the ability to place it and move it and control that just like you could on the old analog days. Now this is working over MSP so you will need to make sure that you've got your telemetry connected, your UART ports connected up properly and again we'll take a look at that closer shortly. The next big improvement on this update is SIM support for the remote controller directly and it now means that you no longer have to use an adapter with the RC, you can directly plug its USB port into your computer and it will allow you to use it with a simulator with no other hardware required. And again, this is a big one people have been waiting for and it just means that the system is again getting closer to being what you'd expect off a traditional RC or FPV unit. There are a whole host of other little changes on the system as well, including some changes to some of the wording in the menus. And there is another new feature that they've mentioned called added the ability to adjust the frame rate and bit rate according to distance and channel bandwidth when the transmission distance is more than one kilometer. Now, I haven't actually been able to find this feature yet, and I've actually put a request in from some people I know, and I'm hoping to get some info on this one as soon as I can. However, here and now today, I can't really tell you any more than what it says in the release notes because that's all the information I have but I haven't actually been able to find any settings for this one myself. Now if you do find anything on this one please do put it in the comments of this video and hopefully we can share that information out in another video in the future as well. Now whilst the ability to record the analog into the DVR, the latency improvements as well as the RC support for simulator are welcomed, the big one for most people here is going to be the Betaflight OSD integration. Now this is going to work slightly different to the original OSD on the goggles because that simply took data over MSP and displayed it on the goggles. This is doing it a little bit differently and it is more integrated allowing you to control the OSD via the Betaflight configurator and move it around and what we're going to do next is take a look at that in action. Okay so to take you through how to do the new OSD via Betaflight. Now the first thing you'll need to do is turn on the custom OSD options in the DJI goggles. So once you've updated all the firmware you go into the main menu on the goggles, go down to display or up to display as I'm going here. You've then got the custom OSD option at the bottom and you will then need to turn that to on. When you've done that you will then see the OSD options that you've currently got set in Betaflight appear over the screen. 
Okay, so to demo this new Betaflight OSD in action, the first thing I'm going to do is connect to my quad and I've got my GoPro recording the screen on the goggles over here and I'll show you some footage from that as the video goes on as well. Now what you do is make sure that you've got your UART connected with MSP as you would usually do to get the OSD information on the goggles. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you have got telemetry turned on under the configuration settings so you simply need to go down to here and make sure that you do have telemetry turned on here and you need that one for the GPS information especially. Then then to configure the OSD you simply go down to the OSD options within Betaflight and everything is available to you to control just like it was within the normal Betaflight OSD options. Now there are 24 options available to you. Pretty much what I've got turned on here right now is all of the main options. One, you will notice that home direction arrow is not turned on because that doesn't currently work within the OSD. However, all of the main standard information does. So RSSI volume, main battery course here, all of these stuff is currently available. Now what you're seeing on the screen is what I've already turned on whilst I've been playing with it and they're the main options that are available. However, you can completely configure these and you can move them around and they change their positions within the system as well. So for instance, if I wanted to move battery voltage from there, I simply just drag it down to there and you'll see it move on the DJI system or I can pop it down there. Now what I'm going to do is turn everything on and then turn everything off which will allow me to show you actually setting it up one at a time. So for me I want to turn on main battery voltage, we want that one, so that one's going to go up by there. I want flight mode, we're going to have that along the top by there so I know what it is and actually I'm going to drop that one a touch higher as well. Um, I'm going to have milliamp hours drawn over in this corner here. I'm going to have GPS sat count because I have got GPS attached on this quad. I want the ladders on for the sidebars because I like having them attached. Now the artificial horizon doesn't work but the ladders do. The cross here does work as well so we're going to pop that on in the centre too. We're going to then also turn on the warnings so I can be able to see them. So I'm going to put that one down there nice and in the middle. And because I've got GPS, I want to turn on the GPS lat and long. And again, those two are available to me as well. And I'm going to pop them down there. And the nice thing about them is if I do have a crash, I've got the position of the aircraft just before the crash happened on the screen for me. I also then have the uh, other options available such as roll angle, pitch angle if I want them. So again I'm going to put them over by here and I'm going to have also turn on current drawer as well and I'm going to put that one down there as well. So just like configuring the OSD on any normal uh, beta flight controller you simply do it click save and then that is saved into the flight controller settings and available for you and it really is as simple as that. Now as I mentioned the GPS home point arrow isn't available at this time but there is a hope that that might be available in the future and we'll have to wait to hear what DJI are going to tell us on that one. However it really is as simple as that and this is a major update that they have brought to Betaflight when using it with the digital FPV system. And that's overall how the FPV system works with the new Betaflight OSD integration. Now it isn't perfect here and now today, there are some of the options that don't work. As DJ have said, there are only 24 today. The ones that don't work include the GPS home location arrow, the ground speed for GPS as well as the altitude readout as well. However, hopefully they are continuing to work on them and we will see them come in future updates. Now this has been a big update and if you look at it alongside the OSD support, adding the analog DVR recording and the improvements to the latency, DJI really are taking away negatives from this system every time they release an update. And really, if these goggles had analog built in, they would probably be the perfect set of goggles. They're certainly getting close to being the perfect set for me. Now, it's good to see DJI continue to develop it, and we will see that happen more and more as more updates come out in the future. Now, there were some little changes in this firmware 
here that I didn't go over as well. One of them is that they've relabeled the power limit option and they've now called this automatically temperature control or auto temp control. And there are a couple of little other options along the way that have changed as well. But overall, the biggest ones are the ones I showed you earlier on. Now, alongside this update, last week, DJI also sneaked out some accessories for the FPV system as well. Now, I have done a dedicated video on that that I haven't had a chance to upload yet, but they have also released a new face mask option for the FPV goggles, as well as the lens correction lenses for people who wear glasses. And these are available to order now as well. Now, if you are looking for corrective lenses, DJI now have these available for the FPV system. They're available to order directly from the DJI website and they cost $22. And they are available in minus two, minus four, minus six and minus eight and they are shipping in the next 10 to 15 business days. Alongside this they also sneaked out an upgraded sponge foam padding and this one should resolve a couple of the issues people have been having with light leaks on the original mask on the FPV goggles because some people have been complaining about it and I have spoke about it before in one of my videos where you can put some shims behind the existing mask because this is only held on with velcro. However they have now released this update one and it costs $15 and it will basically improve the overall fit of the goggles and it should prevent the light leaks some people have been having and again these are available now to order from the DJI site and I will put a link to them in the description of this video too. That's pretty much it for this video if it's been helpful please do subscribe to the channel there are also links to the DJI FPV system the new accessories that I've shown you there if you'd like to support the channel please do check them out it's only by you guys using them am i able to keep making videos overall that's it i hope the information has been useful and i will do another video again soon please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available they are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you if you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I will do another video again soon.